I'm Todd Pyro. We are following this breaking news on all fronts. Griff Jenkins live in Washington, where President Biden is set to speak this morning. Lucas Tomlinson live on the ground in Lviv, Ukraine, where embassy staff were just evacuated. But first, we turn to Steve Harrigan, who is live in Kiev. Steve, what are you seeing? Carly, it's really what are you hearing so far this morning? A lot of really bad sounds from about an hour before dawn here. We heard explosions off to the southwest, eight or ten at a time. And then about an hour ago behind me, behind those clouds, it sounded like thunder, more explosions. Then we heard air raid sirens. We've heard jets overhead. We've heard helicopters overhead. Those sounds are enough to scare people here in Kiev enough to make them flee. Uh, there was a, a lot of denial about the possibility that this could be a widespread Russian invasion, that the Russians would attack their neighbors, their brethren here in Ukraine. Well, they are attacking and attacking in full force. So now, at the last minute, after the bombs have already begun to fall, people are fleeing. They're getting in their cars with their children, with their families, with their pets, throwing everything in the car and trying to get out of town. They are all heading west in the direction towards Poland. So a real sense of fear here that speaks to two things, I think. One, that people didn't imagine that this could happen. They didn't imagine that Vladimir Putin would attack Ukraine and would attack the capital here of Kiev. And two, poor preparation by the government, the government not preparing its people for this possibility, which is now a reality. So a desperate situation, people stuck on the highway, afraid and trying to get away. Carly. Yeah, absolutely, Steve. The images that we're seeing today, that we're seeing on the screen right now of just um, a traffic standstill as people flee west are pretty stunning because the sentiment on the ground in Kiev, as you've been expertly reporting all week, has been that people are staying put. They want to stay and fight. Um, is there also still people in the city who are staying? We're seeing some um, foot traffic, at least I was uh, a few minutes ago during your last reporter hit. How many people um, on the ground in Kiev want to stay and fight because it is a young city um, with a, a Western sentiment that does have um, a great sense of nationalism. So I'm wondering what the split uh, in opinion is there. You're right, Carly. A lot of people have decided to stay for different reasons. Either they don't have the money to leave or out of patriotism or, as you said, a desire to fight. Some people are taking shelter either in their basements or the subway system here, a very deep metro system. It's about 37 degrees. It's a cold, wet morning. It's a tough place to be afraid and in a subway station. But a lot of people are down there right now. President Putin made an announcement in the pre-dawn hours that this would be an attack on eastern Ukraine, that this would be to save Russian, ethnic Russians there from what he called genocide. But it's clear what we're seeing on the ground is something much different, much bigger. Cities are being attacked not just in the east, but all across this country, and Russian forces are moving in from the north, the east, and the south. Carly? Yeah, that is an absolute lie by Putin, Steve. Any sense as to where that the individuals who are fleeing Kiev are going right now? The clearest route out is to the west, towards Poland or at least towards Lviv, but also that city is being hit as well. The real crisis that could happen, depending on how this war goes, is a refugee crisis. It's estimated that as many as five million people could flee. And they're already beginning today to try and get out of here as quickly as possible. And it's going to be a real scramble to try and keep them warm, keep them safe when they do cross those borders. Without Todd. a doubt. Yeah. All right, Steve Harrigan, live on the ground for us in Kiev. Steve, we're going to check back in with you.